Hey, WayFam, how you doing? We just want to thank you for tuning in to a Wayworld Outreach sermon. We believe that God's word is going to change your life forever. So sit back and let's get ready to hear the word of God. Okay, so expect, expect. look at John 4, 35, 36. Our expectation should be in agreement with Christ's expectation. He believes the harvest is ripe. He believes people are ready to get saved all over the world. And John 4, 35 and 36 says, you know the saying, Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up, look around. The fields are ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages. And the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. Do you see what joy awaits? You know what this is a scripture? This is a scripture about expecting people to get saved. Expecting my family to get saved. Expecting your friends to get saved. He goes, what joy awaits you in the future when your friends and family get saved? We need to start expecting for them to get saved because without every one of us expecting the people we know to get saved, to get saved is a sad thing. They won't get saved and their eternal life is at stake. What should we expect? We should expect for God to do big miracles through us. Jesus is still healing people. Can I hear an amen to that? Let's say it again. Jesus is still healing people. Jesus is still setting people free. Jesus is still doing miracles like raising people from the dead, from their hopeless situations. But now he does it through believers like you and I. God is still doing it. Now, why aren't we seeing more miracles? Because our expectations have been too low. We need to start thinking according to Scripture. Look what he says here in Matthew 10, 7. It says, and as you go, preach. As you go, what are we supposed to be doing? Preach. Saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know what he's saying is, start telling them that the power of God is right here at hand. It's available for them right now. And then he goes this, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Well, those are big, let's think about that. Raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. God has not lowered his expectation. He's saying, church, it's time to raise our expectation. I did not leave you on earth to remain natural beings. I left you on this earth and filled you with my Holy Spirit to be representatives of God. Supernatural beings walking on earth. Jesus is in you. And he still wants to heal the sick, set people free, and raise people from hopeless situations. But he's going to do it through you and I saying, God, I'm expecting for you to use me greatly in this season of my life. I'm tired of being a dead, mediocre Christian. I want to be on fire for you. Does anybody want to be on fire for God? And I would say this, the other thing, why would you want to be part of a dead church that doesn't even believe in miracles? Why? Not me. I'm not just here to hear a word. Well, I got a good teaching, but it didn't change your life. Still living the same way you're living, acting the same way you're acting. Nobody's being changed around you. I'm just challenging what God's challenging us to do. When Jesus called them aside, he goes, now, this is what I want you to do. Crazy stuff. Go heal the sick, go cleanse the leper, go raise the dead, and go cast out demons. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> Anything else? How about why don't, you act, why don't you add walk on water there? Because every single thing that he said a mere human being can't do, but a believer can do, full of his Holy Spirit. It's time for us to stop walking by the sick, walking by the demon possessed, walking by hopeless situations and acting like they're not there and acting like you don't have the power. God is just saying this, expect for me to do miracles through you. Stop, pray, <laughs> counsel someone, help them get set free, share your faith. And the last thing we should expect, we should expect supernatural provision for our lives, for ourselves, and our church. Don't expect to live in poverty. 
And I, and this is where I'm going to say this. Poverty is a curse. Because you know what poverty means? Lack. God doesn't want you to live in lack. So stop expecting lack and start expecting provision. How do we know that lack is a curse? Because in the Garden of Eden, there was no lack. Lack and poverty only came after the fall. And now this is what God has said, I've redeemed you. Jesus said this, I've become poor so you could become rich. I took that curse too. It's time for us to start expecting for God's resources to flow through every single one of us and let go of our poverty expectation and start receiving a provision expectation. Is there anybody receiving that? Say, I'm ready for, I'm ready for some provision. And 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says this, and God, look at this. This is why you should expect. You should expect provision because this is what God says he'll do. So if he said he'll do it, you should expect it. And God will generously provide all you need. God will generously provide all you so, so you should you expect for your needs to be met. Who is the one that's going to promise you that he will provide all of your needs? God. Expect it. Then he says, then you, then you, and this is God's expectation on you, will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. She goes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do. I promise you I'm going to meet your needs. As a matter of fact, I'm going to meet your needs generously. I'm going to meet your needs, expect this, with some overflow attached to it. Now, when you get overflow, doesn't mean now it's time to go into an $800 car payment. The reason I just said that, I mean, you could afford an $800 car payment. That, that's fine. But this is what I'm saying. You just got some overflow. You, you, were, you were strapped. And then all of a sudden God gave you a break. And then when God gave you a break, oh, I know what I could do is upgrade. God says, I wasn't trying to upgrade your car. I was trying to upgrade your purpose. I was trying to upgrade your life. I was trying to upgrade. Come on. I was trying to get you to a place that I could begin to work through you. Because what I want to do is give provision to those that are willing to share it with those that are in need. Is there anybody saying, I'm ready for an upgrade in provision. So there's an upgrade in my provision or your provision through me. So this card is going to have also one more thing. I'm committed to giving big. I'm committed to inviting big. I'm committed to be giving big. Now, as a church, we've come a long ways. We built, God has allowed us to build a church through everyone's generous donations and sacrificial offerings. The chair you're sitting in, someone bought it. I remember when we had a building with no chairs. And then we go, man, we have to do one more offer for chairs. Or else we're going to have church and everybody's going to have to stand around for two hours. But in them, we all got together and, and someone says, I'll handle five or I'll handle six, I'll handle ten, I'll handle a hundred, whatever. But we got it done. I'll take one, I'll, I'll cover them. And all done, now you get to sit down in a chair. Isn't that awesome? So now we're in here. And the next step for us, and this is vision, we should expect it. We should expect for every dollar to come in through us for the down payment of our building. You know, when we started this campaign four years ago, the goal to build this building and do everything that we needed to do, we need to raise $5 million. And we have already raised, we're at the finish line, $4.2 million. Let's give the Lord a hand. That's already happened. So... All we have left is these bricks. It represents right around $755,000. And we could knock this out. So I'm asking you to pray. You're not going to turn this in today. So there's, not, there's no commitment today. All I want you to do is take this home and pray. And say, God, how many bricks do you want me to cover? And we covered it. There's like, I, think there's, I don't know how many bricks are left, but each brick represents $500 and Say, Pastor, on, on the 14th, say with me, on the 14th, we're going to have a big day and we're going to bring an offering to the Lord. And wouldn't it be great that before Easter, on Passion Week, we cover the whole down payment of our building. And we say, we knock this thing out, God. 
And you know, once we get the down payment, you know what we could do? We could go into escrow right away, open escrow, and have this building in our name. This would be really cool if we could get the, if we could do this. We could do this. How many believe we could get this thing done? You know, somebody can handle one brick. Someone can handle five bricks. Someone, maybe there's someone that can handle a pallet. So I'll handle a pallet. I could do that. I have the resources to do that. And I, I could do that. And maybe if God's calling you to do that, let's knock this thing out. Let's believe for big things. Let's expect big things this Easter. Our friends and families to get saved. Let's cross a hurdle. Get this building in our name. And let's let God do the next big thing he's ready to do in our ministry. It's going to take some faith to do this, but we could do this together. How many believe we can get this thing done? Awesome. Wow. Wasn't that an amazing word we just got done hearing? Now, before we leave, can I pray with you real quick? God, right now, I just want to pray for the person on the other side of this lens, God. You see their heart, God, and you see their needs, God, and, and I pray that you provide them with everything that they need, God. And I pray that you continue to show yourself to them, God, and to grow them in your word and in your spirit, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you believe that this word has impacted your life and you would like to do the same for somebody else, do us a favor and click this link up here or follow and click the link in the description box. We love you, Wave Fam, and until next time, see you later.